everyone. Welcome to TCM. I'm Jacqueline Stewart, coming to you from the Director's Inspiration Spike Lee Gallery at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. I am absolutely delighted to be discussing our next film, Do the Right Thing, with the cinematographer of that film, Ernest Dickerson. Hello, Ernest. Hello, Jackie. So Do the Right Thing is a landmark film for so many reasons. Talk to us about how you first learned about the project. What were the first ideas that Spike Lee shared with you? I first knew about it when Spike and I were flying from Brooklyn to LA to work on the answer print for School Days, which is a film that came before. And Spike always wrote his scripts on yellow legal pad uh -huh. by hand. And uh, he was writing something that at that point was called Heat Wave. And he just said, look, I'm writing my next film I want you to think of the best way to get the audience to feel the heat of the hottest day of the summer. And so I started thinking about color because mm -hmm. color and the psychology of color is something that I was always interested in. Certain colors have effects on the human body. Reds have a tendency to increase the heart rate, yellows and reds, whereas blues, which is more calming color. And um, this was the start of it, to get the audience to feel the heat of the hot summer day. And everything takes place in one day. So I had to figure out how am I gonna make eight weeks of shooting look like one day. But one of the things that Spike allowed me to do, he allowed me to come in about a month and a half before we started shooting. So I was able to lay down some ground plans to make my idea work. The idea that whatever street we shot on had to run north and south. The street running north and south as the sun travels from east to west in the course of one day one side of the street is always going to be shaded. And it's easier on a cloudy day for me to make one side of the street look like it's shaded than to actually try and shade it on a sunny day. And that determined our schedule. But since we were on this one block for all the time, we were able to shift what scenes we were going to shoot dependent upon what the weather was like, which worked beautifully because the first two weeks we had rain and cloudy days. And so I had a chance to really work out my theory, but it uh, worked wow. out. Well, thank you for talking about color because the color of this gallery mm. is very much inspired by the work that you did on Do the Right Thing. We even have our Brooklyn stoop here in the middle of the gallery. So there are so many ways in which the principles you're talking about carried over into the design that the museum team did on this exhibition. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful gallery. Yeah. yeah. And this, this red reminds me of the red wall. Yes. The red wall with the yeah. corner men sitting yep. in front of yep. it, the great Robin Harris and the others. What were some of the challenges of shooting this film? I mean, you already mentioned some of the limitations of time, of one location, but this is a film that also had a lot of eyes on it in terms of its content. How much were you feeling the sense of urgency, the sense of political urgency that this film was trying to represent? A lot of the, the controversy came up after the film, after the film was released, when people started seeing what we had done. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought our film was going to cause riots. Yeah. Nothing ever happened. But um, the atmosphere that was running in, um, in New York at that time, and some of the events in the film are mirroring real life events mm -hmm. that happened, like the, the police chokehold, which is still to this day controversial. And so um, when we were making the film, I don't think a lot of people knew what we were doing. But when it came out and they saw what we did, that's when that happened. On the set, Everything was uh, worked beautifully. And since we were all on the same block, you know, for so many weeks, it, it became almost like a family. Mm. You know, it really was. And, um, and it was pretty cool. Well, after the film, I want to talk with you more about some of the folks who are working behind the camera mm. with you. But for now, let's take a look. Thank you so much, Ernest. Thank you. From 1989, here is Spike Lee's do the Right Thing. Back with me to discuss Do the Right Thing is the film cinematographer, Ernest Dickerson. Ernest, this film has so many remarkable shots. There are a lot of long takes in this film. Mm. And one of them that always just blows my mind is a shot that sort of moves out from Senior Love Daddy's mouth and then out, out, out through a plate glass window and then you see the entire block. How first, difficult yeah. was it to do that kind of shot, to go from something so minimal to giving us a full view of the setting of the film? 
I think the toughest part was uh, the opening part of it, being tied in there, making sure that there were no reflections that gave away the fact that we were shooting through glass. But uh, Spike and I always loved doing long takes. You know, we had studied the films of Sam Fuller, mm. and Sam Fuller was a master of the long take. Orson Welles was, was a master of the long take. And uh, even in my directing career now, I love doing long wonders. I think the actors love it too, because for them, it's almost like theater for a little yeah. bit, you know? Yeah. They can just go at it. They don't have to worry about the cuts. But for me, it's a challenge because you can put so much into one shot and choreographing it. And, and when you pull it off, you just feel like you really just did something really cool. It's amazing. Another thing that is so remarkable about Do the Right Thing is that we can see the team that Spike mm. Lee is building around him, including a lot of people of color. Yeah. And I would love to hear you talk about some of those folks that you worked with on multiple films, like Wynn Thomas. Wynn Thomas. Wynn Thomas. Wynn first worked with us on She's Gotta Have It. And I met Wynn when Spike and I were in film school. We were trying to figure out where are we going to get a job. And Cotton Club was shooting at that time. And uh, David Golden, who was a production manager on Cotton Club, was one of our instructors at NYU. So we figured, okay, you know, maybe we can get a job on Cotton Club. And he, and he actually encouraged us to come and interview. So I went to uh, Astoria Studios to audition for a job in the art department. And I went into the art department, and I'm sitting in the art department waiting to be, to be allowed to come in and meet with the, uh, the art director. And uh, there was this young brother who was sitting there drafting. And we just started talking. Mm -hmm. His name was Wynn Thomas. We started talking, exchanged phone numbers. You know, I got his address. And, uh, and I went in and did my audition. Did not get the job because it was already <laughs> promised to the art director's girlfriend. So then, you know, several years later, when we were setting up to do, she's got to have it. Spike said, what was the name of that guy you met at the, the Cotton Club? And I said, oh, Wynn Thomas. And I went through my phone book. Mm -hmm. I had his number, and that's how that started. And Ruth Carter, you know, first worked with Ruth on School Days, and I had a great time working with her on this, on, on Do the Right Thing, because the color plan that I had in mind was to really stay away from cool colors, mm -hmm. really just try and keep the color balance more into the oranges, the reds, the earth tones, more warmer colors, because I wanted to get that agitation, that warm mm -hmm. feeling, mm -hmm. that and some of the filtration I was using on the camera. Yeah. And so that had to go into the costumes as well. And so since I had enough time and preparation, I was able to influence that. And so it was total marriage. Yeah, it's really important to hear that this film was not just, you know, such a landmark film for audiences, but that it really did play a role in transforming the industry and bringing so many people of color mm -hmm. into positions like production design and costume design and casting and really breaking barriers in that way. Well, we really believed in Spike and, and the stories that he was telling, you know, because it, it was all about us. It was about everything that we had gone through. I had gone to a, a, a black college, Howard University. And so a lot of the things that we were dealing with in uh, school days was stuff that I saw and experienced in, uh, at, at Howard and just like Spike had at uh, Morehouse. Mm. And so um, we wanted to make sure that we got the truth and told the story the way it should be told. Yes, well, you achieved that. It's such a legacy that you've left with this film, and we're appreciative of it. Thank you so much, Ernest. Thank you. Stay with us. Up next, we have, from 1949, The Third Man.